we have a steep hill of 60 degrees and on it we have a guy named Sisyphus pushing up on a boulder. Okay, so let me tell you a brief about his story. Okay, this is Sisyphus. Let me write his name down here. Sisyphus. He's a Greek legend. Okay, he's a Greek legend. What happened is that he did some things and the god of underground, Hades, forced him to move this boulder up the hill. Okay, up this hill. So let me... Ah, uh, yeah, it's, it's a boulder. Okay, push it's uh, push the boulder up the hill forever. Okay, and even if it comes down, he's supposed to come back down and push it again and again, something like this. So he moves it upward, the thing gets lower down, and he's supposed to move it up again and again and again. So for eternity, yeah, so for eternity. So yeah, let's gain going back to the no, like video. What are we supposed to do here? Okay, so my main goal for this video is to do some physics on Sisyphus and his boulder. Okay, and we're gonna do some things about forces. Okay, what are the forces that um, is making this uh, boulder go up? And what are the forces on this boulder and Sisyphus and some trigonometry? You know, trigonometry, if you prefer it to be that way. And you know, all in all, some physics. Okay, we're gonna do that, but. Before that, I'm gonna say a couple of things to you, okay. Albert Camus once said, The struggle itself towards the heights is enough to fill a man's heart. One must imagine Sisyphus happy. Okay, so Albert Camus in Le Myth de Sisyphe, that is, the myth of Sisyphus, is telling about Sisyphus himself, that the struggle itself of him pushing the boulder upwards is enough to make him happy, okay. And one must imagine him happy okay and this applies to all of us okay whenever we feel really struggling to do something that we like to do some studies do, do our studies and so on we should realize that the struggle itself is enough to make us happy yeah so yeah whenever you feel really really you know you know angry and <laughs> really struggling to do your maths remember sisyphus that he had to you know like take this boulder up the hill again and again and it comes down and he had to do it all over again and forever and he never got tired i think yeah i encourage you to uh, see his history and what's going on with him yeah anyway continue continuing <laughs> with our videos okay let's first talk about free body diagrams here okay free body diagrams so let me write the term down here uh, just a second free body diagrams so what are these okay okay free body diagrams are used to display the number the the, the, the directions of forces that is being applied on an object okay so let's say let's say we have a sort of table here okay a sort of table here and we have kept a sort of box here okay we sort of box here so what are the forces that is being applied okay let me draw an actual table okay it's a table okay what are the forces that is being acted on this block okay, on this on this block on this block on this block and we use this free body diagrams to show that okay let's say not let's say but it is it is true though yeah we have a force of gravity here that is being acted downwards, right? And to balance that, the table provides a normal force, a normal reaction to counter that. And that is why the block is in rest, okay? These blocks, these, this is normal reaction and this is the force of gravity. So these vectors, these forces balance each other out and that is why because of law of uh, you know, inertia, Newton's first law, the block is in rest. Okay, and that is free body diagrams, the drawing of this arrows and stuff. And let's say we push this lock a little. Okay, let me draw, try to draw a hand here. Uh, say this one. This is a very poor hand, very poor hand, a hand. Okay, so hand is pushing the block this side. Okay, so 
will draw a force vector like this. Like, okay, shit. Like this. Yes. So this is a force that is being applied. Let's call it F1, right? So these kind of things is called a free body diagram. Okay, now let me just you know, wipe this off and let's go back to Sisyphus. So what forces are being applied on this boulder? Okay, let's focus on the boulder, okay? The boulder is the thing that we need, or that we want, okay? First, it's obvious that Sisyphus himself is applying a force in this direction, right? In this direction, right? Let me draw a straighter line like this. Yes. Let's call it F Sisyphus, FS. No, no, no. Let's call it F1. Okay, cool. Sisyphus is applying this force in this direction. And we know that the force of gravity always acts downwards. So let me draw that here. Okay. Force of gravity. Okay, cool. Now, what are the forces? Other forces, that is. So we have a normal reaction, of course. Okay, let me move Sisyphus down a bit, okay? Let me move him down and let move this down, okay? Because we need some space, right? Yeah, anyway. There's a normal reaction which is always perpendicular to the surface, okay? So if you have a surface like this, the normal reaction is going to be like this, which is perpendicular. And if you have an inclined plane, the normal reaction will always be going to be perpendicular that to that inclined plane, like this. So in this case, our normal reaction is something like this. Cool. Let's call it F normal. Okay. So what are some other things? I think there is going to be a friction. Okay. But let's not uh, draw that. Let's imagine this hill to be frictionless. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, frictionless. Frictionless hill. Let's let that down. Frictionless. Frictionless hill. Actually, this hill is in Tartarus. Okay, it was called Tartarus in the under underworld, in the Greek underworld. Anyway, the frictionless hill. So no friction. Only the normal force, the Sisyphus force, you know, and the force of gravity. Cool. So this is the free body diagram of this boulder. Okay. So notice how we drew the diagrams from this particular point. Why did we do that? Because this is the center of mass. Okay. This is the center of mass of the body that we are concentrating on. Okay. We could have done something like this. Okay. Let's say this is the boulder. We could have you know done something like this too, you know, from the outside. You no, know, to like this, you know. From the outside, you know, out of the body, you know, we could have done that as well. It also makes sense. But in general, what I prefer to do is draw those, you know, force vectors from the center of the mass. Okay.